All right, jumping out of a plane. Hey, Bill, where are you at on jumping out of a plane? Uh, if you're a chicken shit American, I'm a Brit. How much money would it take you to jump? Uh, I got a bet with my mate that you hate heights and it'd take 500,000 U.S. dollars. Don't change your answer to be contrary to what I just guessed. Keep it fair, good sir. Thanks. Ah, oh, Jesus. Another arrogant Brit. <laughs> These guys think they're fucking geniuses. Um... I've already done it, you fucking idiot, and I paid someone to do it. I paid. I went to uh, in Pepperell, Massachusetts when I was 19 years old, and I didn't do a tandem jump either. I did a static line jump. I've told this story on the podcast, sir, if you're a little bit um, more up on it. Uh, and also, I have a pilot's license. I fly helicopters. So if I was afraid of heights, I mean, I'm afraid of heights. Look. If I don't have a parachute on my back and I'm not in a in a uh, in a vehicle that's designed to fly, then yes, I'm afraid of heights. Like I don't like uh, you know, like if you sh like one time I watched a YouTube video and they just showed these guys that had to climb up to the top of this fucking building and then no, not climb. To the, well, they took the elevator. Who's getting hooked? They, they, they were on the roof, and it was already on the fucking roof. This building was so fucking high up, and you know the wind up there must be ridiculous. I would literally just lay down in the fetal position and crawl back to the fucking door that leads to the stairwell, reach up to the handle, and fucking go back down. But this this dude um, then climbs the fucking... The, the the whatever the, the the radio tower or whatever and it just keeps getting higher and higher and higher and and the tower gets smaller and smaller and smaller and he's hooking and unhooking his safety line i literally i i couldn't i mean obviously the guy lived because it's his gopro on his helmet and i've never been so fucking unsettled watching something in my life okay then i would hate heights but i think at that point Everybody hates heights. But, um, yeah, when I was 19 years old, I went to uh, this place uh, in Pepperell, Massachusetts, which I don't think exists anymore. There might still be an airport there. And they had a, uh, a school. And uh, you, I did the static line jump. If you've ever seen that movie uh, Fandango, one of Kevin Costner's earlier ones, where the dude from uh, Breakfast Club, uh, Judd Nelson, his character jumps out. Um, that's exactly what I did. And I remember when we went up, the command was sit in the door, get out. And then he slapped you on the shoulder and said, go. And, uh, I remember when he said, sit in the door, I thought he was saying, close the door. So I was reaching up, I'm sitting down, reaching up, trying to close the door. And he had this big smile on his face. Like he thought I was chickening out. I feel like I just told this story on the podcast and, then I finally realized he was saying sit in the door. So you sit in the door, and basically it's one of those planes where the the wing is above the aircraft. You know what I mean? It's on top of the aircraft as opposed to below, which actually gives you much better sight, I would think, um, as far as if you wanted to look down. Um, and then there's the support that goes to the side of the plane. So And then right above one of the landing wheels, the wheels don't retract on this plane, they had uh, welded a little step. So <laughs> you sat in the fucking door and uh, I forget how high we were. I want to say we were only like 1,500. We weren't that high up because your shoot immediately comes out. Um, so you, sat, you, you sit in the door, then he goes, get out. And then what you do is you reach out and you grab that support beam from the wing and you hold on to that while one of your feet is, uh, is standing on that little step thing. And then basically what you do is – I'm literally acting this out so I can remember it – is you then basically you, you bend your arms and you bring your chest like flush with the support beam. And then the, the, the foot that's dangling, you put it straight out behind you. It's almost like a yoga pose. So we sit in the door, get out, and then he slaps your shoulder and he goes, go. And you let go. 
and then you you arch you arc right arc one arc one thousand two one thousand three one thousand look if nothing look reach pull and when you're looking you're looking over your your shoulder to see if your chute came out and then if nothing you look down at the handle <coughs> reach pull it because for some reason they say if you don't look down you might be flailing because you're panicking because it's the first time you jumped and the chute didn't come out <coughs> <clears throat> Sorry, cayenne pepper. Ah, hang on a second. So, anyways, I get out. He goes, go. I let go. And instead of arching, I, I don't know what I did. I just reached for something. All I know is I started doing front, fl- front flips as my chute was coming out. And I felt it go by my leg. The inside of my leg, I felt it go by my leg. I felt something hit that. And I was immediately thinking, oh, my God, I'm going to roll right up in this fucking thing. Like, you know, when you put bacon on shrimp. And uh, the second I had that thought, like the shoot already had come out. And by the grace of God, I didn't get tangled up. I think about that sometimes, like how easily I could have fucking died. Um. And then, boom, your chute comes out. And when your chute comes out, you don't even feel like you're falling because there's nothing going past you because you're above the tree line and all that. So you just feel like you're just sort of suspended in the air. And uh, there was a radio, and this lady just talked you in. She say, pull the left toggle. And you had to pull it all the way down to your knee because I remember there was this, this big girl in the class, and she couldn't get it around her hips. And uh, she landed across the street in a pile of loom and uh, dislocated her knee. I remember that before, and and then I went up after her, and I was just like, fuck. Um, And then they have this ridiculous, you know, when you get to the tree line, you suddenly realize how fast you're falling. I think it was like 17 feet per second or maybe 11 feet. I can't remember, but it was really fast. It was like basically, you know, jumping off of of a basketball rim, like how fast you'd come down. It had to be a little bit slower, right? No, no, because you're not reaching terminal velocity. I don't fucking know. So all I know is when you hit the ground, what you were supposed to do is look straight ahead. Because for some reason, if you look down at your feet, what you were going to do, they were worried you'd pick your feet up too quickly and somehow break your legs. So what you had to do is look straight ahead. And as right as you hit the ground, you're supposed to do this little fucking like collapse down. And then this big ridiculous bring your both your legs straight up in the air and then over to your side. I don't know why. I doubt that they still have people do that. And I did what everybody else did is I came down and the second my feet hit the ground, I did a face plant <laughs> right into the grass. And my buddy grabbed the uh, the mic from the person and called me a dickhead, something like that. What a dickhead or something in the um, in the in the radio. Um, so, yeah. There you go. So I did it. And what are you basing chicken shit American on? Huh? All you tough guys over there with your fish and chips. Have you done it yet? 500 US. There's nothing you can. If I don't want to do something, I I wouldn't do it. There's not money that you can give me. I know he goes, oh, give me a fucking break. No, I'm making great money. I got enough money. I got enough money. I'm good. To take my life in my fucking hands? No. That's one of those things. No, No, I was back working at the warehouse. I mean, granted, I pay somebody. When I was working in a fucking warehouse, I, uh, shit, you know, let's see. How much would they, I mean, if they gave me, literally, if you gave me $400, you would have doubled my pay for the week. So I would have done that. Well, let's see. Let's go back to the building. To climb up that building, how much money would they have to give me? Uh, when I was working in the warehouse, uh, eight hundred dollars. Um, and that now for that that building, uh, I would say, uh, yeah, I, I just wouldn't do it. <laughs> That's no, I'm all right. I'm all set. I'm all set. I, you know, I should actually send you guys that video. Um, so it's not that I hate heights, sir. I hate um, risking my life. To that level. If there's like a parachute or something like that, and there's a bungee cord or there's like a fucking safety line, that's fine. But you know, going up that tower where I have to unhook the safety line and then hook it back up and there's wind and shit, fuck that. That's too much of a risk. I wouldn't do that. 